How's it going, everyone? I'm just uh, sitting editing this episode of the podcast. I realized I coughed quite a lot during it, and there's a bit of an intermission where I actually changed positions. Um, I was actually in a public library to film this. My Wi-Fi options were pretty limited. Um, so I ended up changing position halfway through. Overall, really interesting episode. Uh, Frederick, my guest, I think has a really great product and I think they're going to do pretty well um, and help a lot of clubs within sort of the next five to ten years. Really enjoying getting back into this as well. Obviously, it was just so busy over in Kings Barnes that I didn't really get the chance um, to do it. Armed with good Wi-Fi and uh, the hunger to return to podcasts. Um, this has been really fun. Just finishing off the edit here now. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy the episode. Leave your thoughts down below as well. Um, and I'm always really curious to meet other people that are creating cool things in the golf industry. Um, so if that's you, then feel free to reach out. We'd love to have a chat at some point. Enjoy the episode. Hi, I'm Graham. My two greatest passions in this life are golf and technology. Luckily, my jobs at the minute intersect both of these as I caddy at Kings Barnes Golf Links in Scotland during the day. And at night, myself and a team of golfers are working on an app called Handicaddy, which is helping golf clubs schedule caddy jobs at the click of a button. While we're on a mission to change the caddying industry, I want to speak to as many cool people, creating exciting projects within the game of golf. I really believe the future of the golf industry is bright, and this is the Future of Golf podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Future of Golf podcast. This is where I chat to some of the brightest people, creating some of the brightest ideas within the game of golf. And our next guest is no different today, uh, joining us live from Copenhagen. That was like a Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> live from Copenhagen. 12 points to... 12 points to Denmark. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got uh, Frederick uh, Knudsen, who is joining us from Denmark. Uh, Frederick is heavily involved in the How Many Strokes Golf app, which is making information really easily accessible to members and golf clubs. And in my opinion, it's a beautiful way um, to display a lot of information really easily um, in golf clubs. Um, so obviously, we're going to get into a bit of a deep dive about uh, Frederick and his journey, as well as the product um, that he's involved in. But first of all, Frederick, thanks for joining me this evening. I'm very, very good. Uh, Even though it's uh, we have a storm in Denmark right now, so uh, so yeah, it's a little bit cold and windy, but otherwise it's amazing. Uh, So yeah, I'm just happy to be here in your great podcast. So uh, yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, we. I was saying in the last podcast, we've got actually very good weather in the UK as of recent, although it's starting to get a little bit colder now. But in general, it's been fantastic. Um, very strangely warm, actually. Um, yeah. But Denmark, not so good. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually the same. It's been quite amazing. We have had the highest temperature in the October and beginning of November ever. So, uh, yeah. It's a, uh, it's nice for golfing, but uh, the global warming is uh, really taking its uh, tour on the, yeah, on the world. But uh, yeah, it's good for golfing. But uh, let's uh, let's hope we can uh, change that a little bit in the future, all of yeah. us together. We'll we'll not upset too many people with our opinions and that. Good for, good for golf, but bad for the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, Frederick, talk to me a little bit about golf in Denmark because I feel like. Um, maybe a lot of people in the UK don't know a lot about um, the sport in Denmark. So obviously you're in Copenhagen. Like, would there be a lot of courses near the city? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we have like one course in like Copenhagen. But uh, like if you go like within like 30 minutes of uh, Copenhagen, we have quite a lot of uh, actually uh, amazing golf courses. So I'd say... Uh, if you haven't been to Copenhagen, it's a good place to go and visit the city and see a lot of uh, great uh, yeah, tourist attractions. And uh, it's a very old city, so it's uh, quite amazing to go there. And then you also have options to go play some incredible courses within 30 minutes of the city. So I'd say it's a it's quite a good place to where you can combine a 
big city, uh, maybe Copenhagen compared to people in the UK is not that big of a city, but uh, but still a big city with a lot of nice restaurants. We have two of the best restaurants in the world. Uh, so, and in general, the food scene in Copenhagen is quite amazing. And yeah, and then I go again for golf, I would say if you go like 20, 10 years back, it was mostly driven by volunteers and uh, people like, yeah, doing it in the spare time. But you can really see that uh, I think uh, most golf clubs now have like very professional uh, people running the clubs and probably inspired a little bit like what you have been doing for many years in the in the UK with the professional managers and stuff like that and promoting uh, yeah the golf club to to members and potential members and participation rates actually go up then so more people taking it up yeah you know before the before 07 you know with the with the financial crisis there were they built like quite a lot of golf courses like uh, a lot uh, and maybe too many for just uh, around the financial crisis. But after like three, four years after that, people really got into it again. And now you can see it's difficult to get into the most of the golf clubs around the whole country. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really growing. And um, yeah, again, it's professional the way they run the clubs. And uh, yeah, it's it's also quite expensive. Not you don't have that. They those really really expensive clubs, but in general, it's uh, it's uh, it's difficult to find in uh, a club where where it's not at least a uh, uh, thousand quid a year, and then you have it from there and uh, upwards to see it on the DP World Tour. Uh, the Danish Golf Federation have done a lot for like uh, yeah for the for the elite in the country and you can see with the high guard brothers and in general yep. compared to how many people we are in denmark we have quite a lot of uh, success on the on the tour and uh, uh, they have been done a lot of great work uh, uh, by the by, by the danish uh, federation so yep. yeah so it's growing it's booming yeah i i completely forgot about the the high guard brothers and then obviously to be on olsen and Ryder copper yeah, exactly. Um, and then obviously Thomas Thomas Bjorn. Yeah. Denmark yeah. as well. I mean, that is one of the biggest names in the European tour yeah. over the last 20 years. Um, that must have obviously had a massive impact then on the youth coming up, seeing these yeah. stars perform. Yeah, yeah but he... It was like the macro he, effect in Ireland, just seeing someone really succeed. Gets yeah. a lot of people in it. Yeah, you can see Thomas Bjorn did like amazing job he was the first one showing that a dane actually could go on the tour and actually win tournaments uh, so you can see i was probably the first generation like when he came out i was like maybe 10 years old or something like that and you could really see that that yeah young people could see that it's actually you have a future and it's a, you're able to be a professional golfer before before thomas Bjorn, it was something that you really didn't feel like was possible coming out and you know with the track man who was in the about it in Denmark you know it's they they also done a lot for how we practice uh, golf I was actually one of the first uh, first one trying a track man uh, with the I was uh, playing golf with the the founder of the yeah. of the of the track man uh, solution so we were standing uh, hitting balls at the range with the, like all kinds of radar and computers all around. So uh, it was a, uh, it was quite amazing. And now I've seen the journey they've been on. It's yeah, it's quite unbelievable. Uh, it, it's funny you mentioned about sort of like the driving range technology. I was speaking to um, another guy working in Sweden at the minute. Um, so a guy, Stephen McDaniel, um, mm -hmm. maybe you came across his name. Uh, so he works for a company called Range Servant. Um, so they're leading providers in range technology, um, so like ball dispensers. And I sort of asked them why from like Scandinavian countries and even Denmark, like why is all this range technology coming out? 
And obviously he was saying that the winters are so bad and so long that you're spending four or five months at the driving range. So obviously that's a huge component of, of golf in the likes of Sweden, um, which forces people to innovate and create new things. So that's fascinating that you had that experience with uh, sort of the OG of the, the track man days. And obviously they've flipped me like every, every tour player seems to use it now. You can go up the driving range and it's just on every bay. Yeah, um, that's yeah, that's unbelievable. Amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, but it really also changed the way. Like you know, <laughs> when I started out in the beginning. If you if you were lucky when you got like a practice, then you it was with a video camera and they slowed it down a little bit. Now you just get everything spin, uh, attack angle, whatever, and yeah, you just you can really perfect uh, not only your own swing because I feel like. Back in the days when I was playing, it was uh, when I was younger. It was like more or less they tried us to make us do the same thing. But now when you get all the information, I feel like you, even though all of the tour players they had like the same uh, great kind of swings, but you still see the unique things that make them hit the ball the best way possible for them. So yeah, it, it does quite a lot. Uh, I have done quite a lot the last. 20 10 years with the that technology coming out so yeah yeah and then again also i think especially in denmark with the range thing we are we are like very closely populated so it's easy to go to the range and people going there having fun and uh, enjoying we also see more and more of these like fun range uh, like <coughs> in the days it was just going there hitting balls now you have with small uh, bars and restaurants and like two free layers of driving ranges yeah. so yeah so a lot of stuff is happening and that's awesome yeah. so maybe talk to me a little bit about your own personal golf journey frederick so when when did you start taking up the game i was uh, taking up the game around age nine i would say i was playing a lot of football um and uh yeah, I was playing a lot and I was just starting playing golf with my grandparents. And then uh, around age 12, I had a very bad knee injury. So I had to at least have a break from uh, football. So, uh, and I really like sports in general. So I was like, what else can I do? And the, the physio said, yeah, but you cannot do anything. And then in the end, I asked, what about golf? And uh, yeah, he said, you can do that, and uh, then I ended up uh, playing quite a lot of a uh, lot of golf, and ended up being uh, actually very good at it. I was on the juniors national team uh, for five years in Denmark, actually alongside uh, Olesen. So uh, yeah, wow. we uh, we have played uh, a lot against each other. I have beaten beaten him a couple of times, so uh, I can at least uh, say that uh, for myself now. So. Uh, so yeah, so and then, uh, yeah, then I st actually stopped after around age twenty for some years. Um, yeah, so uh, and then I picked it up again late twenties when a lot of my friends from outside of golf started playing and met other friends that were new friends that were playing and yeah now I just play when in the season I play like two or three times a week if I'm lucky. So. Uh, so yeah, so it's an amazing sport, and again, you can play. I think it's one of the most amazing sports because you can play with all kinds of levels and uh, ages, and it really brings people <coughs> brings people together. So I, I think that's uh, one of the unique things about sport, for instance, compared to tennis. If I if you play with somebody who's a little bit higher level, it's not that fun. You need to find someone who is uh, at the exact same. Uh, level but here everybody can play together from all ages and all levels so exactly. it's quite amazing yeah and that that's really cool that you played at such a high level internationally as well that must have been an incredible experience and especially aside the likes of toby orn Olison, um was there anything in his game that stood out at that young age that was sort of the differentiator I would actually say now i said that i've beaten him uh, some a couple of times i would actually say uh, i beat him quite a lot but the thing about him was he usually came to a tournament 
and then he was shooting 82, 64, uh, 78. So, you know, and he also won a lot of tournament, I have to say, but, but you know, he had the ability to shoot very low compared to, to the rest of us. And again, if you need to go very far, you need to have that ability. And then you just need to combine those four or three rounds a couple of times a year if you want to make it big. It doesn't... I was I was pretty consistent, but I didn't have that like very low low score in me. Uh, so so yeah, so uh, I would say that was probably what stood out when you when you saw him playing. That you came in and you just saw like sixty four on the scorecard, and that was at a very very young age. So uh, so yeah, I would say that was probably what I noticed about him and also why it made made sense in the end that uh, he was the one coming through and playing yeah. on the on the tour. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there about handicap um, and obviously the ability for people of different levels to play against each other, which you're right. I think it's one of the most beautiful parts of the game. Um, like being able to spend time, you know, a lot of people, fathers and sons would go out and they can, they can spend five hours and have a competitive match together. Um, mm -hmm. while up and you're right, like no other sports, like you can't go into a, a gym and lift weights with someone and it'd be competitive if they've been training for five years and you're, um, you know, the first person in the gym. So I, I agree with that. And I think that segues quite nicely into the product that you guys have launched in the golf industry. Yeah. So obviously the first use case of your product was, um, I believe it was a handicap conversion table. So do you want to maybe explain just in general, what is the, the How Many Strokes app um, and, and sort of what stage are you at with the business at the minute? Yeah, I can start from the from the beginning. It was, uh, I, it's my partner, Tony, who, uh, who has been working in uh, technology for many years. He is, uh, he's been working for within that for like 30 years or something like that and have had like big positions and big companies uh, in in that industry for many years and uh, he is playing at the Scandinavian and he was having a, a chat with the with the CEO up there uh, David Shippen an Englishman and uh, yeah they were talking about the the conversion tables you know the old paper version or the big board ones that mm -hmm. And uh, David was just saying, like, why haven't anybody done this smarter? And uh, then Tony said, yes, I will, I will do something smarter for you. And then he, this is like a little bit more than three years ago, he made like a demo only for, for the Scandinavian where you can just type in your handicap and then you get all your options on the course. So you can see all the T boxes in one view with all your different stroke options. Uh, uh, for that and uh, then he after he made that uh, or made the demo he said why have why why don't i do it for like for so it can be brought out to all the uh, golf clubs in the world because you know we are all tired of like paper and uh, stuff like that so uh, yeah so he started doing it in a way so it's actually with a so you have a portal where you can go in and change the different uh, solution, and the clubs can do that themselves. And also, like now, I'm not the I'm not the technical genius of the of the company, but um, so so you know, so it's a, a safe uh, safe uh, software that where you can everything is uh, with the right servers. We have servers in Asia and Europe and uh, the US. Uh, the first product that we made is like this conversion table where it's you have it like in three different options. The ones that most people, uh, most clubs use is the, is the screen where you can get like a 21 inch wall mounted touchscreen where you just, it's pretty basic, but um, you go in and uh, type in your, your, your handicap index and then you get your course handicap but then again you get all your options in one view which makes it easier for you to try out new t boxes uh, trying playing forward 
getting new experiences. We hear that from like a lot of clubs when we talk to them afterwards, that they see and get feedback from members that they, instead of just going playing that tee box they always done, now when they go type in their handicap, they see, okay, but I only, I gain four strokes by playing yeah. here, or I only lose two by going one forward. And uh, they just see like, they get new fun experiences at the course. And uh, yeah, it's just like in, in general, that's like, not what was the idea, but the idea was just to make it simple, easy, just type in one thing and then you get your options. But that was what uh, one of the benefits that we saw. Mm -hmm. And then also another option is that uh, you can, within the system, you get a unique QR code that you can, uh, can put on uh, your scorecard on a sign on the first T that you can scan and then you get the same solution on your on your phone uh, for instance we have a we have a club who uh, put it on their new scorecards and uh, and they just ordered like a big bunch of new scorecards and then they found out like uh, beforehand they had the slogan rating on the scorecards uh, and like two months after they ordered all the new scorecards two big pallets of scorecards they got new slogan rating oh no and beforehand all the slogan rating would have been wrong, but now they just have the QR code. Yeah. So, so now they can just change it with a, within a second within our system and it will be on the QR code. That, so, that's actually a really interesting point because obviously, you know, I, I, I've seen the screens and they're obviously very um, aesthetically pleasing. They look really nice. Um, what I didn't consider was the actual cost benefit of golf clubs not having to reinvest whenever things change. So obviously, like golf courses are, are constantly undergoing design. Like, I don't know about Denmark, but it seems like every club in Ireland is getting, you know, new greens, putting in new tees, putting in every sort of four or five years. Mm. And obviously the yardage of the golf course will change in that. Um, so you said there that it wouldn't necessarily be that the golf club has to print out sheets, but now using your app, you could just um, update the information and it would just be done seamlessly. Exactly. It, within uh, within uh, two seconds, it will change on the on the screen. It will change on the QR code, and the last bit you also get is a, a iframe for your website. So you'll get the calculator, the same solution, put it on your website. It takes like two seconds or something like that. <coughs> and for instance, what we also found out uh, when we try uh, when we started uh, entering. Uh, the, the UK market is that there's actually two different ways that we use the, the world handicap system. There's actually two different calculations. So uh, in the rest of Europe and the rest of the world, we use one calculation to uh, do a, how, or calculate how many strokes we have on the course. And actually in the UK, uh, there is another way to uh, figure that out. So, and I guess then within some years, I, I don't know which one is best, but it's still different. Yep. So for instance, we have signed the Clandy Boy in, uh, Clandy Boy in the Northern yes. Ireland. And for instance, if, if we end up using the European version of the calculation, because in the end, I think it needs to be the same. So yep. it's uh, the same, that's the whole idea of the World Handicap System. Yep. Then if we change the European version, Clandy Boy now can push one button and everything is changed in one second. So, uh, and if we go to use the UK uh, version, all the clubs around the Europe that we have, uh, they can change it in one second. So uh, they are up and running. They don't need to new do new calculations, whatever. Or if there comes a, like a whole a third way of calculating that is better, we will change the calculation in our system, and everybody can be up and running in yeah days time. That's depending awesome. on how long it takes for us, but it will probably take a day to do the new, put in the new calculation. So you, you, you've expanded into Northern Ireland, and you didn't even tell me. Yeah, but I'm it's also quite there. new. It's quite new. So, uh, so I I'm sitting in Belfast at the minute. So Clandy Boy is you know a couple of minutes outside Belfast. Um, but it's fantastic you're having success in the UK mm -hmm. as well, because um, I knew the product was you know starting to get established within Europe. 
Um, but obviously there's, there's a market, as you say, globally for something like that. Um, and you know, we've, we've talked a few times, Frederick, about potential use cases. Um, and, and maybe I'll go into a few anecdotes here, but one thing is around golf clubs, whenever you walk into the pro shop or you're walking about, you see a lot of paper and a lot of, you know, notices to members or maybe competition results. Um, is that something that you're sort of considering in your roadmap or, yeah, are but you we, dense information maybe we are, we are actually launching a lot of stuff <laughs> in the next couple of months we already uh, we have uh, we have launched uh, uh, live weather on the on the on the screen we have launched uh, uh, today's screen speed something that uh, we, we are, have made for Sangok, who will have the solution uh, yeah, maybe next week up and running uh, because they use it and talk to a lot of other clubs who actually said that's kind, kind of cool to have that because it's not something you have ever considered. But here, if you measure it every day, you can put it in in two seconds and people know, are they fast today? Are they, yeah. are they slow? Uh, but it will be all kinds of information from information from your from your men's club or for a ladies club, juniors club, it can be, so when, so when you go to the screen, it's not only for the, for the, for the handicap, it's also for, for a lot of information that you say like is static and people need to go change it on the board and people never really go there anyway. Um, so they can bring it. They can also be all sorts of uh, stuff for, um, for if you have 27 holes, uh, some people have uh, some courses have that, then it can be today's combination for the 18 holes. Um, so there's quite a lot there. And then also, of course, you have the, the screensaver uh, when it's not running. So you can, we have a lot of clubs uh, at least uh, paying for the solution, but some clubs also make money on the solution, showing their sponsors and, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, new sponsors uh, making money that way. Yeah. Some clubs use it uh, to promote uh, new tournaments. We actually also had a club who had problems with the, the way the members took care of the course. Uh, they didn't fix uh, uh, Davids and stuff like that uh, uh, when they were playing. Then they put up like on the screen when it was not used, please help the greenkeeper taking care of the course. And within like three four weeks they could take it down again because people changed their behavior on the course and helped taking care of the course so it's a better experience when they right. when playing there so so yeah it's a lot of uh, options there as well so uh, i yeah i i think through even going through what you were saying there there's a lot of revenue opportunities but a lot of ways that you can help out golf clubs that i didn't think about and actually viewing your tool as a potential revenue generator even if if golf clubs wanted to approach it that way um obviously like if you think about the number of members in a club let's say a club has 500 members and each of them are walking past that screen you know two times a week and you have a sponsor there you know that's going to be a, a pretty big value add um so that is that's an awesome feature what sort of stage is the company at, at the minute like how many how many clubs are you, you guys in we, you know, the first demo was made like three years ago and uh, I entered the company actually almost a year ago today. And at that stage, we had like uh, three clubs who had just seen it like a demo. And uh, at that point, we, uh, my partner Tony really finished the whole, uh, the whole solution. Uh, and uh, we met like half a year before that and got to talking. So I entered it and now we have like uh, almost uh, uh, 50 clubs uh, around Europe. And we also have in South Africa and Mauritius. And uh, I have a meeting next week with a couple of clubs in uh, Thailand and tomorrow a club in England. And yeah, uh, and Scot uh, some Scottish clubs uh, in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, it's also this time of year that people are like uh, clubs are now having more time to they are not uh, preparing for the for the season or yeah. doing all the stuff they need so so we have a lot of uh, meetings and uh, 
yeah, we uh, we can see that the interest is like really increasing, and um, then we yeah we just keep on developing, and also I would say most of the things that we are like developing for the solution, making it better and easier for clubs is almost always like getting feedback from the from our from our clubs and uh, you know it's uh, we have always been uh, really running uh, with it for a year but you know it always takes time uh, for people to to, uh, to get to get to the point where they where they where they where they go with, go with the go with the solution but we can yeah we can really see that people are coming back with the feedback we make the small changes that makes the even the value even higher for for the clubs and i i can say one of the things that i'm like most proud of is uh, is that when when i speak to clubs that have had it for like two or three months uh, I, have, I have yet to try it. them not wanting to make a, a review about the solution a positive review about the solution and how it have, has helped them for many clubs it's uh, it's also helped uh, reducing uh, like the workload for the staff and stuff like that. And maybe one of the things that is also important to mention is that our solution is an open system. So you don't need to download the app. It's a web app, so it's open for everybody. Mm-hmm. So if you if I come if I go to Clandy Boy to play, I cannot use my local app uh, or the federation or whatever. I I have to be able to look up my playing handicap. So, so what we also see it's 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 relevant for every club, but the ones with like a lot of visitors coming from outside, it, it helps them. Uh, it helps them out a lot yeah. to to be able to provide something. And uh, when you enter a golf club, you have a lot of touch points that makes the experience. You have the course itself. You have the clubhouse. You have the restaurant. You have the staff. Most importantly, but what I noticed when I went there to see if this was also interesting for me to get into, it was like I went there and saw how people used the solution there. And like, you know, back in the days for me, when it was just paper, when I played, it was like, it was just something you needed to do to know how many strokes you had on the course. But here it was like, Everybody went and used it, and they went like, "Oh, it's fun to do today." But especially when they brought guests who hadn't been there before, they were always like going there, have a look at this, try this, and you can see they were like yeah. smiling and they were talking about it. So it's actually and getting the conversion table, getting your handicap, went from something you just needed to do to something that actually added a little bit of value to your experience when you were when you were at the course. That's really interesting, and just. From my perspective, obviously, as a caddy, what you'll find is a lot of players will ask you, what is the slope rating on the course? What is the green speed? Is is often a a common question. And I think for courses with a lot of visitor footfall, I think having that touch point where um, whoever's welcoming them to the club can say, for all required information in the club today, please uh, feel free to use our screen and, and interact with it. Um, I think it is a big value add. Um, so sort of to conclude this, Frederick, I'd love to hear sort of what the mission of the company is in sort of like five, 10 years time. So um, where do you see yourself uh, being positioned? Yeah, you know, like our main goal was or is uh, when, I, when I spoke to Tony to go in there, one of the things he said that really got to me is like, we want to create a better experience or better golf experience when you go there. So everything we do and our mission, I would say like overall is taking everything we do today that is paper or it's a little bit, uh, you know, hard to do. And people like, for instance, we talk about green speed. You just mentioned it before. Yeah. And it's like, it's actually something that everybody thinks is interesting, but where should have you ever put it? But again, adding a little bit of value to knowing that people are knowing what is the green speed today. And what we also will do is like when you every day when you insert the green speed, it will make an average. So you also know, so you get the information saying it's whatever, 
11.2 today, but the average over the year is 10.5. Okay, so they're actually quicker today than they were yesterday. So in general, the mission is just to create a better experience. And uh, yeah, so now we have uh, we have made uh, this solution and we'll change it a little bit from a digital conversion table with the, for the handicap to like an information board where it's yeah. easy for for the members and guests to go and uh, get information. And uh, it's also easy for the staff actually to do the things they used to do easier, but also actually adding more value to uh, to uh, to the experience. And yeah, within the next 10 years, that's, I would say, when you work with technology, 10 years is a, is a, is a long uh, period of time. A lot could change, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I would I would say our our main goal is to get out there and uh, into the world, and we will also try to work a lot with the uh, machine learning, so it will be something that uh, will make it even better and easier. We have a lot of uh, ideas, and we also again we use uh, the clubs a lot, getting their feedback. What is it that they really? need or whatever and then we mix it up with all the different ideas and with our own uh, knowledge mostly uh, tony my partner's knowledge because he knows what is uh, possible technically but uh, i'm sure you're doing a lot of it as well frederick i wouldn't doubt that um but i mean yeah i can 100 percent see the value of the product, you know, adding that little touch point to a visitor's experience can be the difference between them them coming back, maybe never going back to the golf course again. Um, and I think what's really exciting for you is the number of potential routes you can actually expand into. And very cool to hear that you're expanded into Northern Ireland as well. Um, so Frederick, I'm sure we'll have many more conversations on this podcast sure. as, uh, as your company grows. Um, but yeah, it was awesome to have you on and uh, and you'll be My welcome. Pleasure. Every My time. pleasure. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Graham. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, following you and also Handicaddy and everything else. So uh, it's going to be a, a great journey. And also, it's also just amazing to see how the the golf industry is, is uh, evolving in the, this new era and the also following other people, also competition or something that is close to competition. That's really something I'm really looking forward to in the next couple of years. It's exciting times, absolutely. Yeah. Frederick, my friend, thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, take care, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for watching another episode of the Future of Golf podcast. To make sure you don't miss another one, click subscribe and to track my personal progress at Handicaddy, check out handicaddy.com and visit our links on our social, all down below.